The movie begins with a young man named Ben applying for a scholarship. He's currently an MIT mathematics major and also got accepted into Harvard. However, he can't afford the huge tuition fee of $300,000, and that's why he decides to apply for a scholarship. After submitting his application, he's informed that there are 75 other applicants just like him and that only one of them would be given the scholarship. The director makes Ben aware of the insane competition he must face and informs him that he has to write a very impressive essay to prove that he deserved the spot. Later, Ben returns to the clothing store where he works with his best friend named Miles. There, he's promoted to assistant manager and gets a raise as well, which would earn him $8 an hour. Even though he passed several exams, took extracurricular activities, and worked extra hard, Ben is still held back from attending Harvard by his lack of money, and it gets him riled up. He complains to Miles about how he doesn't even know what to write in the essay. On Ben's birthday, he goes out with Miles and his other friend Cam to celebrate. The three talk about their science project, which they plan to build a self-driving car for. Back at school, Ben attends a lecture given by his professor named Mickey Rosa. While teaching them about nonlinear equations, Professor Mickey asks the class about Newton's method. Ben answers, stating that Newton stole the method from a man named Joseph Raphson, who had already published the same method 50 years earlier. Impressed by his answer, the professor allows Ben to earn some extra credit. He asks Ben another difficult question, which he answers correctly, earning himself extra marks. After the class, Professor Mickey checks Ben's most recent test scores and is astonished when he sees that the student scored 97%. While playing basketball at the school gymnasium, Ben sees the girl he has a crush on. Her name is Jill, and he sees her waving at him, so he waves back but then quickly realizes she was acknowledging someone else. Later that evening, Ben is studying in the library when another student approaches him and asks Ben to follow him. Ben is perplexed initially, but decides to follow the student, get to a room with other students sitting around a table, playing blackjack. He's also surprised to see his professor standing in front of the students. He welcomes Ben and asks him to join the MIT blackjack team. The other students named Kiana, Fisher, Choi and his crush, Jill, introduce themselves to Ben. They explain that they play blackjack professionally and travel to Las Vegas every weekend for high-stake games. They also reveal that a spot on their team opened up since the previous member got a job at Google. Initially, Ben is reluctant to join them since he isn't too familiar with them. They all try to convince him to join, including Jill. But Ben comes up with different excuses and eventually declines their offer before leaving. The following day, Jill approaches Ben at his workplace. She's come under the pretext that she wants to buy a tie, but in truth, she's come to convince Ben to join their team. She flirts with him and persuades him to join, telling him he should try out new things. Later that night, Ben finally arrives at their secret club. They all welcome him warmly and begin to explain the basics to him. They tell him that high cards have a value of minus one, Neutral cards don't have any value, while low cards are plus one. Ben spends the rest of the night and the next day learning and memorizing the words that the team told him to learn. Afterward, the whole team goes to a diner, explains the roles of each team member. Kiana, Choi, and Jill are the spotters who sit at different tables, betting the minimum so they can signal Ben and Fisher when the time's right. Afterward, Ben goes to an underground casino where he sees that his spotters are already seated at different tables. Choi signals him that the deck is hot, so he sits at that table. He then uses the word magazine in a sentence, one of the words that Ben memorized to tell him that the count is plus 17. Hearing this, Ben starts making big bets and gets excited when he sees how much he's winning. Unfortunately, this joy is short-lived because a bag is suddenly thrown over his head and someone with a deep voice asks him what the count is. Despite being under a lot of pressure, Ben manages to tell them that the count is plus 18. The bag is then lifted from his head and he's surprised by a round of applause. It turns out that he just passed a test set up by the team to know if he can keep the count under pressure. Ben passes his initiation test and is officially welcomed to the team. The following day, they all travel to Las Vegas for the real game. When they get to their hotel, the professor gives each of the students a new identity to disguise themselves with. 
The professor tells Ben that he should always act like he doesn't know them during their time at the hotel. He also tells him to make sure he always orders water, tonic, and lime while pretending to be a little drunk all the time. When they get to the casino, Kiana signals Ben so he sits at the table. Kiana then takes a few sips of her drink and claims that it's too sweet, using the word sweet to tell Ben that the count is plus 16. Ben makes the right play and wins the first game, along with $4,000 from his opponent. Ben plays again and wins $3,000 more. For the rest of the night, Ben plays at different tables in the casino, winning a lot of money and shocking all the other players, including Fisher, who is astounded by his skills. The next morning, Jill wakes him up and gives him his share of the profits. She commends him for his skill and timing. She also informs him that he made more money than Fisher. Ben admits that he was nervous at first until the entire thing felt easy for him. They're then called for a group meeting, where Mickey praises Ben for his performance while he scolds Fisher for playing poorly and making many bad decisions. When Ben returns to school, he hides the money he made which is roughly $17,000 in the ceiling. Miles walks into the room and Ben quickly pretends to be jumping on the bed, not wanting Miles to see his stash. Miles tells him that he's been calling him and asks where he was over the weekend, so Ben lies that he was helping his cousin move and forgot his phone. Later that evening, Ben sees Jill at a bar and offers to buy her a drink. Cam and Miles are stunned by his sudden confidence, but he just tells them to stop acting weird. Afterward, Ben and Jill get on a train together. He asks her why she came to the store to convince him to join the team and she tells him that she wanted him on the team because he's the smartest guy she knows. Ben then tries to kiss her, but she pulls back and he apologizes. Jill tells him that she doesn't want things to get complicated between them because they work together. Over the coming weekends, the team travels to Vegas and makes so much money. Ben realizes that he now makes his five years' salary every weekend, which feels too good to be true. Ben and the other team members live lavishly, spending money without having to worry about the cost of things. However, someone soon begins to monitor them. The head of security named Cole Williams begins keeping tabs on Ben, suspecting that he must be counting cards. Meanwhile, back on campus, Ben's life has changed for the better. There's rarely anything he can't afford, and he starts getting invited to the biggest college parties and hanging out with the other rich kids because of his new status. Fisher, on the other hand, isn't as successful, and he begins to get jealous of Ben. One night at the casino, Fisher gets drunk and goes to Ben's table, hinting that they know each other. Meanwhile, Cole, who's still monitoring them, finds out the pattern Kiana has been using to signal Ben, so he rushes with his men to bust them. Luckily, Ben and the others manage to leave before Cole can get to them because he caused a scene in his haste. Afterward, Mickey kicks Fisher off the team and informs the others that the casino is changing their chips in 24 hours, so Ben suggests that they use the dancers to swap the chips for cash since they can't do it themselves with the heat on them. Later that night, Jill invites Ben to her suite, and the two share a romantic moment before making love. When Ben returns to school, Cam and Miles decide to continue their science project without him because he's no longer committed to the work. As a result of this, Ben gets upset and lets his emotions get the better of him during a game, causing him to lose $200,000. Afterward, Mickey furiously scolds him and tells Ben that he has to find a way to pay back the money. Mickey leaves the team, taking a 50% cut, and Ben tells the others that they don't need Mickey to win. Jill reminds him that he only joined them because he needed money for Harvard, but he claims that he insists on playing though he's already made the money. They go back to the casino to play, and Mickey tips off security about Ben's scheme. Cole confronts Ben and beats him up in a room, revealing that he also played the same cat and mouse game with Mickey years ago. Afterward, Ben returns home and finds out that he didn't get the scholarship because a professor, who is one of Mickey's friends, deemed him ineligible. He goes to his room to find it turned upside down with his money gone. Afterward, he goes to meet Jill, and apologizes for not listening to her back at the casino, telling her he doesn't want to lose her too. Days later, Cam and Miles win the science competition without him, and he apologizes to Miles for letting him down, explaining all that he's been going through. Afterward, he visits Mickey, 
and convinces him to play one last game with them to make back all the money they lost. This time, Mickey would be a player, taking Fisher's spot. They travel back to Vegas and make $640,000 from their blackjack tricks. Eventually, Cole finds out that they're back with disguises, so he plans to raid them, but they run away when Jill spots him coming. Cole and his men chase them, and Mickey tells Ben to give him the chips so they can't split up. Mickey takes the chips and hops into a limo, thinking he's swindled the others, and that he escaped, but quickly finds out that the chips are fake. It turns out that Ben swapped the chips, and also made a deal with Cole. Because Cole still held a grudge against Mickey, he told Ben to lure him back to Vegas for one last game in exchange for the profit they make. However, after catching Mickey in the trap they set in the limo, Cole threatens Ben and Jill, telling them to give him the real chips so he can use the money to retire. Not having much of a choice, Ben gives him the chips, but it turns out he also had some other friends counting cards for him, who also made a decent amount. Ben finishes telling this story to the scholarship director, leaving the man gobsmacked. That's all for today's recap. Hope you enjoyed it. Please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to see more videos like this. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.